I've got some really fantastic news today, absolutely fantastic news. This is the best news coming out of Portugal since I don't know when. So a new law has come into place. That means that now in Portugal, public charges do not have to be on the government controlled Mobi E network. What does this mean? What's happening, etc. Let's just go back a bit. What's the Mobi E network and how does it work? So there's an idea that Portugal came up with early on, um, when EVs weren't that popular, I believe. And basically there was a law that stated that all public charges need to, needed to be on this Mobi E network. If you are Ionity, if you are BP, um, if you're any charging company, you had to be on this public network to work in Portugal. So that's that. All public charges have to be on the public network. How did it work? So if you're a charging company, you had to accept a Mobi E compatible charging card. So this would be like an electricity company would give them out. So the price would be the charging card, which would literally be the electricity company, and the price of the charges. So you'd have the price to charge in kilowatt hours, minutes. You'd have to add to that the price of the electricity card you've got. You could get a number of different electricity cards. Um, that could be minutes and or kilowatt hours. So one could be minutes and one could be kilowatt hours. And then you have to add the taxes and the uh, Mobi E network fees. So you never really knew what you were paying. It was really far too complex. But uh, I mean, one of the advantages is you could use any electricity company on any charging post and any charging post has to accept any electricity company. Uh, so forth and so on. Now, it was quite good three or four years ago, I believe, because you'd only need one Mobi E compatible charging card for the whole of Portugal. And the whole of Portugal. And that would work on any charger. And three or four years ago, when I went to Spain or other countries, no, well, not three or four years ago, even, yeah, yeah, three or four years ago, when I went to Spain and other countries, you'd need a different app, a different card per charger. It was a real pain. But the rest of Europe has kind of... Um, <laughs> the rest of Europe has kind of caught up. And nowadays, generally in Europe, you can have just one charging card. And all the networks are all compatible and they work it out. And it's really easy and simple. There's some exceptions, but basically um, it's really easy and simple now. So basically the good thing of the Portuguese charging network is basically already been implemented in Europe. But the problem is, when you've got a public network, you don't have much in the way of competition, like you can't have Ionity Pass. Tesla refused to go on that network. The Tesla supercharger prices are much cheaper than the network prices, but they weren't allowed to install new chargers for four years. Also, a problem with this was that in Portugal, a lot of the um, Mobi compatible cars, cards were electricity companies. So you have to have a home electricity with EDP or with Iberdrola or with Galp before they would allow you to use their cards. There were a few like Prio that allowed you, that allowed foreigners, sorry, foreigners is such a bad word. I mean, tourists or business people come to Portugal. Um, wouldn't allow these foreigners um, to you to get hold of these cards when they come to Portugal. So that was a big mess. Um, Prio did, but then it didn't. Mio did, but then a lot of um, a lot of foreigners have problems with Mio because of their credit card or whatever. And people always uh, contacting me saying this isn't good, Mark. I'm coming from abroad. It's not good. Whatever. Anyway, hopefully all of that stops now because the law has been approved on Thursday. So that's the first fantastic thing. And the first thing Tesla have done, Tesla over the past couple of months have basically they're charging stations which there's very few of them and very few charges in Portugal because I haven't been allowed to bring any online for four years have all been working sites for the past two to three months when I was in Lole last week uh, they were adding eight new charges to Lole um, when Alcatrilia in the Algarve as well they're adding I think another further eight charges as well and Last weekend as well, I was actually in Alcasa do Sal, and in Alcasa do Sal, that was a work site. I wanted to choose a charger there. Um, they had 10 chargers, but there's actually a queue of eight cars. I, I went to Lidl, it was empty, a 50 kilowatt charger. But a 50 kilowatt charger at Lidl, when that Alcasa do Sal charger is full, is not much slower, to be honest, because they have V2 chargers there, and they're only, um, 
75 kilowatts when the people are sharing them. So they couldn't even upgrade the old chargers to new chargers in Portugal. They had to keep the chargers they had. So we had basically antique Tesla chargers in Portugal, a lot of V2s. So in Alcácer do Sal, um, if you'd been there, they had 10 chargers of V2. They added like three or four years ago, I can't remember, four new chargers, just four. And they all and they just had a, a sheet over them saying coming soon and it was really frustrating because you'd go there to be a big queue and you'd have these four chargers doing absolutely nothing but when i was there last weekend they still had coming soon on those chargers there was a queue of eight people obviously i went to little but there was lots of construction work going on because they're going to add an extra or they're going to bring online an extra 14 chargers so the idea is that currently they install an extra 10 chargers in alcasa do sal and these are going to be V4 chargers. And since the law came in on Thursday, within 24 hours, Tesla turned on those four chargers in our cast to sell. So within 24 hours, it went from 10 chargers to 14 chargers. They're going to put another 10 chargers in there. So hopefully that'll be 24 chargers in our cast to sell. Not only that, they are going to replace all the current V2 chargers with V4 chargers. So you're going to go from 75 kilowatts to, I don't know, 200 or 300 kilowatts. Perfect. So, between Lisbon, and, between Lisbon and Porto, the two big cities in Portugal, there are currently two superchargers, one at Fatima, one at Malheida. Malheida is going to get an extra 20 chargers that's already in construction, and Fatima is going to get an extra 18 superchargers already in construction. And at both sites, they've currently got V2 chargers, quite a few, I think, not enough. And all those V2 chargers are going to also be upgraded to V4. So some people are complaining this isn't enough supercharger, but when you're considering you're upgrading V2 to V4 as well, I mean, let's see, let's see. Another site that's about four years old is Castello Branco. Now for me, this is a very important site um, because to go from um, Lisbon to the north, if you're going that way to Trazos Monts or something, going to Sal Salamanca in Spain, you've got the charges in Gua Guada, but because it's quite hilly and stuff, it's quite difficult to do a full trip to those charges in Guada if you've got a uh, Tesla without much <laughs> kilowatt hours. And Castello Branco is the perfect place for them. Now, I've had these charges available, I think eight of them, for about um, four years. The sites never come online. And hopefully that site will be coming online as well soon. The other site in Matazinhos, they're going to add more chargers. I'm not sure about Guada, but when I get to Guada, it's never full anyway. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Tesla, hopefully a lot of these Tesla chargers, they're still installing them, will come online in 2025. The sooner the better. Obviously, this is not just great news for Tesla owners. It could also be good news for non-Tesla owners or EV owners in general, because perhaps in the near future, those Tesla superchargers in Portugal will be um, available to non-Teslas. Now, I think they really need to um, increase the number of them um, for that to happen, but they're currently doing that. And hopefully, um, yeah, non-Tesla EV owners will be able to start using Tesla superchargers in Portugal, like basically everywhere else in the civilised world. It's great they're increasing the superchargers in these places, absolutely necessary, but there are some, some gaping holes for Tesla superchargers in Portugal. And one of them, I'm in the estuary now, one of them is behind me somewhere there, and it's called the beautiful city of Lisbon. Now, the closest Tesla supercharger to the beautiful city of Lisbon. Currently, it's, back, it's Alcas do Sal, or it could be the other one, um, <laughs> which is near uh, Montmornov. Um, which I guess is about 70 or 80 kilometers away. So, obviously, you're not going to go there from Lisbon to charge your Tesla to go back there because it's going to use a lot of your battery. Um, so, they definitely need new superchargers in new locations like near Lisbon. Uh, more near Porto, just they need more supercharger locations. And so then, then that's the Tesla news. Let's forget about, forget about Tesla because Tesla howled out there and never went onto the Mobi network. 
And I would just like to, before I forget, I was meant to say it's the beginning, I'd just like to thank everybody who has been fighting against the Mobby Network in Portugal, including myself recently. And finally we won. And it's great. It's fantastic. So what about other networks? So Ionity, um, I was using the Ionity app recently and I could use it in Spain and stuff, but I, they changed the interface. I tried to log on the other day and I just can't select a country because Portugal's not there in the country because they've got RNT charge in Portugal, not on RNT network, but I can't um, accept Portugal as a country. So I'm finding it really difficult to get onto RNT and use their chargers using their RNT app. Now I could use something like um, Octopus Electroverse, leave the link below, um, or things like that on RNT, but I can't use their app because I'm Portuguese. So it's got like a list here, Poland stuff with the P, but no Portugal. So hopefully the Ionity chargers can come off the Mobi e network. We can use Ionity Pass if we want. And then Portuguese people like myself can start using the Ionity chargers abroad. Um, like myself, I'm a resident here. Uh, but obviously I was born in England, but it's not my fault. I was born like that. Anyway, let's continue. Also, Tesla doesn't allow Portuguese people who are not driving a Tesla to use the Tesla chargers abroad. Other people can, we can't. It's all EU, I don't know, go figure. Um, it seems against the law to me, but hopefully now um, Portuguese people will be able to start using Tesla chargers abroad if they're not driving a Tesla. Even though I own a Tesla, if I go to Spain without a Tesla, I can't use the Tesla chargers. Um, um, but people who have never bought a Tesla in their lives can use them if they come from, say, the UK or somewhere else. Go figure. Also, I was using, the, I've got Iberdrola at my home as my um, electricity supplier. I've got an a, a Iberdrola card in Portugal and I've got an Iberdrola app when I go to Spain. Um, the problem is they were two separate apps, one for Portugal, one for Spain. But in about four months ago, they put it into one app called Iberdrola, which is for Spain and Portugal. That seems, you may say, Max, well, that makes perfect sense. That makes no sense whatsoever because now they've got one app. I have to choose if I'm in Port if I'm Portuguese or Spanish. And if I am choose I'm Portuguese and continue with my Portuguese Iberdrola card on the Mobi e network, obviously, I can't use this Iberdrola app or Iberdrola card in Spain. So that means I've currently been excluded from Iberdrola charges in Spain. If I do the opposite and, um, just select Spain. I can use Iberdrola charge in Spain, but then I can no longer use the, them in Portugal. Oh, it's a big mess. <laughs> so perhaps one of the reasons behind the Iberdrola app changing into one app is now in the future, I'll be able to use my Iberdrola um, card in Portugal and Spain. And Iberdrola with EP, a BP Pulse are basically going to be the biggest charging network in Spain and Portugal. If not this year, then next year. The investment they're putting into Spain and Portugal, BP Pulse and Iberdrola is absolutely incredible. Amazing. Anyway, so there's other players that now could potentially start coming into the market. Perhaps Iberdrola, BP Pulse is going to leave the Mobi E network. And perhaps Aunt is going to leave the Mobi E network. Perhaps with that they can lower their prices because um, Aunt, for example, on the Mobi E network is extremely expensive compared to Spain. Um, and um, <laughs> anywhere, I think. And uh, if you use a Mobi E card, and the same, um, and perhaps EB with Bedrola, BP Pulse, even though they're advertising on the Mobi E network, even if I've done videos with um, them saying Mobi E network with a credit card now because you can accept credit cards on the Mobi E network and stuff. If they leave that network, perhaps the prices can become lower. Because a lot of people complain the prices, especially for Type 2 charging, is really expensive in Portugal. But I think the problem is a lot of them have got the Mio app, which the prices change all the time, and it's a bit more expensive compared to that. If you're Portuguese, you can have an uh, Iberdrola card or EDP cards. It's probably a little bit cheaper for Portuguese people, but we still have to pay them our e fees. So everyone's hoping the prices will drop, but obviously it's not going to happen overnight. It depends if people start leaving the Mobi network. The Mobi network is not dying as far as I know yet. Um, so it's going to be a transition period and we see what happens. Also, other um, players can come into the market from Spain, such as Thunder and Buenia, more easily would be my guess. And also for Portuguese players like uh, I don't know, EDP, for example, um, but they lower their prices and come off to Mobi e Network. What about PowerDot? PowerDot Power has got some really great chargers um, around Portugal. Will they come off to Mobi e Network and lower their prices? Let's see, shall we? Let's see. 
But saying that, people complain about the prices in Portugal. I was charging Italy recently, and Italy is really expensive. You cross the border to Austria, we'd all think Austria would be cheaper than Italy. Would be, we all think Austria would be more expensive than Italy, but no, Austria is cheaper than Italy. So, um, yeah. But I'd say uh, Spain is probably definitely cheaper than Portugal, apart from Tesla charges, are cheaper in Portugal than anywhere, really. But anyway, that's that. Yeah, so um, the there's going to be a transition period. It's going to take a bit of time. We're going to see what happens. It's all good news. Should mean we get more competition in Portugal, more charges. People like Continent, which were really in the grey zone of the law in Portugal, should be able to expand more easily. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic news. About time is what I say. And hopefully for foreigners, I mean tourists and business people, coming into Portugal, it's going to be much easier for you in the future as well. Um, yeah, and the prices, they're going to be more transparent. I know some people say, oh, it's really easy. You, do, you add the electricity price with the charging post with the taxes. But you never know what you're going to charge. When you go abroad, it's just like you pay 59 cents per kilowatt hour. If you use 59 kilowatt, if you use 10 kilowatt hours, it's 59 cents times 10. It's easy. You don't have to do all this maths in your head. And then when it's per minute charging, it's really difficult because, you know, the charging speed starts to drop. So it's all... Or very complex to really know how much you're going to pay beforehand. Open, transparency, competition. Perfect. This is what we wanted. I just wanted to update you on that. It's absolutely fantastic. Brilliant news. And yeah, if you have got an EV, come to Portugal. There's no problems. Come here. And now it's going to be even easier and hopefully cheaper. I do say it is cheaper because electricity in Portugal is not expensive compared to other European countries. I mean, recently I've got Iberdrola at home and they sent me a letter I know, a couple of weeks back and they said my electricity price per kilowatt hour is dropping from 19 cents to 15 cents. There could be some Portuguese people here telling me that there's some other tariff where it's even cheaper or something. But anyway, I've got that one. Um, uh, and they're going to be telling me that doesn't include a few taxes or this or that. But anyway, but basically the price has dropped this year to 15 cents for me at home per kilowatt hour um, on just a kilowatt hour price. Uh, so electricity is not cheaper. We shouldn't be paying a fortune to charge here with some communist overcomplicated public network. But that's coming to an end. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody, and bye.